finally got around to having a proper look at it and getting it out and trying it. Let's go through the box first. Unboxing video, you love them. All right, so you've obviously got the unit, Type-C charger, little Allen key, an adapter. My favorite bit, the thank you card. I really like that. I think that's awesome when companies thank you for spending money with them. So that, cool. This cap controls all the uh, controls. So you're gonna screw the lid. You've got a nice tight fucking O-ring on there so no water's getting in there. And then you've got your power button and your mode select button. So you press that to turn it off like so. Press it to turn it on. And you press and hold it to change modes. So I've got sniper mode engaged now, which I think it does one in four and has none of the flash from the LEDs. Don't know why you'd want to use that. And you've got on but no tracer. And then you've got the standard mode, which is all the flashing. Um, you can select your colour RGB thing with this one, so this just scrolls through the options as to what it can do. It's a pretty tidy unit. One thing I will say, it's bright. Like, I've got torches that aren't as bright as that. Uh, it will light up a room and give you a way. I tried to do some cool, like, facing the camera shots. But, this is, my phone couldn't handle it. What do I think of it? You can't run these with the ASG Scorpion Evo. Which was going to be my test gun for this. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little ridge just on the inside of the unit, just about here, that stops anything going through. So the Evo has a little bit of a gap before it's thread. And unless your thread goes all the way to the end of the barrel, it ain't going on this gun. As a counterpoint, my cheap ass Spitfire works fine. We'll go over the Evo and the same for the BT. So, yeah, that's one or two little niggles. Does it work? Yeah, it works really, 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 really well. Um, would I use it? Probably not. I don't like the flash that gives you away. It's the same reason why I don't use the Spitfire. Uh, I play mostly woodland and the last thing you want to see is a rainbow coming out of a bush because that's when everybody knows where you are. So all you Evo users you're going to need to buy a barrel extension or an adapter. Oh and the manual. I wish they'd made the manual a book, not an ordnance survey map. And now ladies and gentlemen, here's the event you've all been waiting for. I'm going to have to do a video on an Aries. I don't want to do a video on an Aries, but I'm going to have to do a video on a fucking Aries. And the reason I've got to do a video on a fucking Aries is because I get the same messages and I don't know what people are thinking when they message me. They tell me, hi there, I've seen all your videos, I love your channel, uh, I love your outlook and brilliant, great. I bought an Aries M1100. What can I do to make it last for a long time and to make it good? Here is a video for all you people that are still going to buy an Aries. And yes, the new Raypax thing, as far as I'm aware, is basically an Aries, all right? So watch this and listen and fucking understand. Another side note, what's the best gun I can get? I watch your channel and I've watched all your videos. And uh, can you let me know which is the best range, performance, accuracy, reliability? Then you haven't been fucking watching, have you? You haven't been watching. I don't recommend fuck all because fuck all's good, stop asking me. You can kind of make an Aries last for a while and I know there are those twats on Facebook, oh, I've had my Aries and I've had it for seven years and I've never had a single issue with it. But they haven't realized the performance is so sub fucking par, it's untrue. If you run them at lower power, they do last longer. You run them at DMR power, this is gonna break, all right? This video today is me showing you why I can't do a lot with an Aries. All right? This wasn't something to discuss as far as I'm aware. This guy came along with his buddy, he was dropping some guns off, and he happened to bring this along. Can you look at this? He's actually on my list as uh, Aries Bastard. What the fuck were you thinking? Do you not listen to anything I say? So here you go. Ready? 0.32's in the mag. 
1.05 joule. Let's pop it open, shall we? This looks like it's got a promy rubber inside it. Probably a promy barrel, both completely overrated and uh, overpriced. Regular old Aries gearbox, there it is. Biggest problem with these, they crack at the front. They crack at the front. Now, this guy's gonna want this thing throwing 0.32s of DMR power and I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna have this running at around 340 FPS on a 0.2, or let's say 1.1 joule, all right? That's what I'm gonna have this running at. That way, if he chooses, if he chooses to put a bigger spring in there and have it firing at meaty power, that's his choice. I am not gonna be responsible for putting the spring in here because although it's gonna sound stupid, I only warranty the parts that I put in here. Prime example. If I leave the gears standard, say, if I leave the gears standard, there's a chance they might strip. So I normally change out gears to make sure they do last longer. Not quite as easy in one of these, but today I'm gonna give it a crack, all right? It's not like it's a difficult job, it doesn't always work. And we're not going with high speed, so I was gonna change them out to a set of boring old 18 to ones. The rest of the parts in here are perfectly serviceable. But if you make the air seal too good in an areas, the power drops because of the way them it's just what they do. <laughs> you have to make the air seal very slightly uh, wrong. But you'll see a lot of the parts you can't do fuck all with. Basic, very cheap motor. One Aries gearbox. As you can see, proprietary. This body only likes this gearbox. And with this gearbox, you can't fit any other kind of internal MOSFET, you're stuck with this unit. These units like to fry. This piece here, there's a magnet in the gear. As the gear turns round, that tells the gun to stop firing, basically. That spring is quite meaty. Now we get to argue with these screws. Now earlier on I mentioned warranty on parts. I warranty the parts that I put in here, but I don't warranty parts I don't put in here. Now, if I change the piston, piston head, the cylinder, the cylinder head, the nozzle, the gears, if for some reason, let's say, the receiver breaks, let's say the receiver breaks, they're holding it one-handed, it snaps. No one, no one, not even the owner would go, well, you owe me, a receiver because it's got nothing to do with me. I did the internal parts. Now what if I change the piston, piston head, cylinder, cylinder head nozzle and one of the gears go. I've kept the original spring, I've kept the original top half parts, the gears break. Not my fault, especially with an Aries. Uh, not my fault at all, not my fault. Yeah, makes sense. What if I change the piston head, the cylinder head, the gears, the spring? Would I then be liable for the piston? No, I didn't fit it. You wouldn't buy a car and when the windscreen wipers stop working, you take him in to get the windscreen wipers replaced and then a week later your exhaust pipe falls off you're not gonna just go back there and go, that's your fault. Oh wait, yeah. The Kevins and Karens fucking do, don't they? Must be something you've done. Yeah, they do. They, If the gears break when I've changed the piston, yeah, they they have in the past said, well, must be something you put back together wrong. So why won't I happily and easily take an Aries on? Remember, this one only is here because the guy happened to have it on him when he came along with his mate and I grudgingly took it on, grudgingly took it on. In this gun, I want to change as few parts as possible. 
as few parts as possible. And the guy knows if anything breaks and it's not a part that I put in there, I'm tough shit because it's a fucking Aries. The gearbox casing on this will break. This, this, clack. It's gonna come off, it will, I promise you. I only warranty the parts that I put in there, but the gun has to last for a good while and, and it has to be a reasonable improvement over when it came in. If it's not firing any better than when it came in, what's the point? There has to be a noticeable improvement. And with Aries, they don't really get any better. They don't really, you change the hot rubber, fine. The rest of it doesn't really get any better. So there's not going to be any real performance improvement. It's still gonna perform, it's gonna cycle the same way because of this MOSFET ETU EFC thing. Um, EFCS, whatever the fucking hell they wanna call it. Electronic fire control unit. So let's get inside it, shall we? Now the company that supplies the airy stuff and the new pro stuff, they do offer a really good service to the retailers, which is why the retailers continue to do it. They continue to sell this stuff. Um, not because it's good, but because they've got backup from the company who supplies it when it breaks, and because they don't have to do anything to outsource. When I order parts, I have to normally go to other countries. I have to have parts made for me. So, tappet plate spring is miniature which means it pulls the tappet plate really hard. It needs to do that because if you just put a regular tappet plate spring on there, it doesn't feed properly and the power's low. But these tappet plates break like fuck. But you're stuck with it. Piston. The plastic at the back of the piston rack breaks very easily and the rack just slides out the back. You can see the amount of um, grease in here. Yeah? Now, this is gonna have a terrible air seal. Absolutely abysmal. Abysmal. But, if I were to give this a decent air seal, the power fluctuates because of the size of these holes in this POM head. I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna change the O-ring. And I'm gonna change the piston. Oh wait. I can't, because it's glued in. So, cylinder head. Look at the amount of crust and grub all over it now. Because of the sheer amount of grease they load this thing with. Why are they loading it with grease? Because it prolongs the life of the gun. It doesn't increase the performance in any way, shape or form. And there's no fucking air seal. It simply prolongs the life of the gun. So, already problems. Original piston head, original nozzle. Dush. Aftermarket cylinder head. Nozzle, nowhere near fitting. And what length is it? 21.2. Which means I don't have nozzles that are gonna fit it. So I can't use that to make it better. I have to use this. So now it's got a new piston, piston head. That's fine. But note how the gear rubs on there. You can see that is noticeably pushed backwards. I take the gear out, I let it settle, it drops forward. So it's over here, it's because it's touching on here. But that's okay, because we're gonna try and change the gears as well, right? Right, aftermarket gears. 
Now it doesn't touch. And it's not leaning. Yeah? What I'm going to do with these gears is pop a magnet inside it. If you look at this, there's a magnet. The AOE on that is atrocious. It's hitting corners, which means it's going to break. But I've already got one spacer. If I add a cylinder head with a pad on it, it's too big. It clips the teeth. So, can't close the gearbox because of this. That doesn't fit, so it needs modifying. Yay, Aries! Just found something else. Started to wipe the grease away. Took a little chunk out my finger, look. It's a burr! Giant burr, sharp burr. So, I've done what you wanted. The G&G mag now fits. Click. Easy peasy. Well, it's all done, I can't believe it, to be honest. I can't believe it. It um, worked first time. There's nothing I can say about that. It just worked first fucking time. That's a beautiful day. So, new gears, new piston, new piston head. Couldn't use an aftermarket cylinder head uh, with a pad on it because nozzles won't fit and it overcorrected. So, I expect the power to be quite low but I managed to make it so that it leaks just enough air so that it actually fired properly. All the gears are out, the shitty Aries ones, they're gone. Set of nice tough ones. It's doing 1.03 joules on a 0.32. And basically, the guy remembers when I spoke to him. Don't push the limits of what you do with an Aries gearbox, it will break. And hopefully this way, it won't break. You know, fingers fucking crossed. Uh, it sounds normal. It sounds like a normal, boring Aries. Nothing special. This is literally uh, the standard motor. It's not slow. It's not fast. It's just average. But if he wants to put a, a torquing motor in there for some more snap, he can do. That is up to him. Um, I said, see how you feel about it to start with. End of. But that is on the 11.1. But there we go, you know, it works, it's fine. Um, just can't DMR it. I highly doubt if I did another one, it'd be that fucking simple. I highly fucking 